The second section in chapter 5 talks about test planning and estimation. Like we said in chapter 1, planning is a continuous activity. It begins at the beginning of the project and it continues throughout the life cycle. Planning may be documented in a master test plan or we may have a separate test plan for each level. A test plan for unit testing, integration system and acceptance testing. So what do we do in test planning? What are the activities that are done in test planning? First, we determine the scope, the risks, the objectives of testing. We define the approaches that we are going to use in testing. We define the test levels, unit integration and system. Do we have system integration or not? We define the entry and exit criteria in our project. We begin to integrate and coordinate the test activities in the software lifecycle. So for example, if we are working in waterfall model, so we have to know when do we perform testing after development. If we are using V model, so we should know that we will perform testing in each level. If we are working in agile, testing should be coordinated in a different way and so on. We should decide what is going to be tested and how. We should select the metrics that are used in the project. We define the amount of documentation required. Are we going to write test cases? Are we going to write bug reports? Do we have a lot of documentation or less documentation? And then we assign the resources that we will need during our project. Let's talk about the entry criteria. What is the entry criteria? Like this picture shows, entry criteria defines when to start testing. What are the things that when they are ready, we can begin testing. Examples for this, like test environment availability and readiness. Is the test environment ready or not? Is the test tool ready or not? Is the code available or not? If we are going to perform white box testing or unit testing, we should have testable code, of course. If we are going to perform acceptance testing, alpha or beta, we should have test data, okay? So all of these, can be considered as entry criteria. With entry criteria always comes exit criteria. Exit criteria means when to stop testing. For example, in unit testing, we should perform 100% decision coverage. This could be an exit criteria for unit testing. Examples of exit criteria, thoroughness measures, how deep did we cover the project? How much did we cover of the code of the functionalities of the risks? The defect density, how much defects are left, is our system reliable or not, the cost of the testing, if it is finished, we can't perform more testing, we have to stop testing. The residual risk, which means the defects that are not fixed because we didn't cover all areas of the software. And last, schedules such as those based on time to market, okay? We need to be in the market on the 1st of January, for example. So I have to stick to the schedule and don't break it. When we perform test estimation, there are two ways to estimate the amount of effort required for testing. The first is metrics-based approach. In this approach, we estimate the testing effort based on certain metrics from our project or similar projects, okay? So we have certain metrics, obvious metrics, that guide me in the estimation process. The other approach is the expert-based approach. In the expert-based approach, we don't gather metrics, okay? We estimate the effort based on the tester that has an experience in the field, so he can tell us how much time does he think this task will take. So what are the factors that affect the testing effort, okay? The factors that affect my decision in estimating the testing effort. The first is characteristics of the product. The size of the product, is it a big product? Is it a small product? The complexity, is it complex or not? The requirements, does the product have a lot of requirements or not much requirements? The second is the characteristics of the development process. Even if the product is small, or not complex, maybe the developers don't have the skills enough for this project. So in this case, the testing effort will increase, okay? So from these factors come organization stability. Are the employees stable in the company? If they are stable, then the testing effort is decreased. If they are not stable and every time a developer leaves the company and another one comes in his place, then the testing effort is increased. The tools used, the skills, the time pressure. If there is a time pressure, the testing effort is increased. If there is no time pressure, the testing effort will decrease. The third factor is the outcome of testing. So before we begin testing, we identified the characteristics of the product and the characteristics of the development process. And we made estimation about the testing effort. 
after we perform testing we will find number of defects okay this outcome will guide me in the future will guide me in deciding do i need more testing is the testing effort estimated after this testing is a lot or not here we will talk about the difference between the test policy the test strategy the test approach the test policy is like a high level document for each organization okay so this is like a philosophy for the company some guidelines about testing that the company should follow in all its departments any project that comes to the company should follow the test policy of the company then for each project we should have a test strategy each separate project should have a strategy that we will work on it inside this project then the implementation is called test approach after we followed the test policy and we made a strategy for this project we can choose the approaches that we will work on in this specific project so what are the most famous approaches in software testing we have analytical approaches approaches that are based on analysis like risk-based testing we have model based approaches here we follow a specific model like stochastic testing and gaining statistical information that guide me in testing we have methodical approaches here we follow a specific method like experience based checklist based failure based error guessing and fault attack we have process or standard compliant here we should adhere to a process or a standard like agile and industry standards like ieee dynamic and heuristic approaches like of course exploratory testing which we talked about in chapter 4 consultative approaches here we get advice and guidance from experts in the field the last is regression averse approaches which means that we have approaches that try to reduce regression risk okay we should control the regression by using automation testing of course or using standard test suites or using existing test material to guide me in the regression testing